Uh, to Piers Morgan, I said, some of the Osbournes have been Hollywood royalty for decades. Uh, unlike the royal family, it hasn't stopped them voicing their opinions on them. Kelly took to a podcast recently to tell us exactly what she thought of Prince Harry. I think Harry is a f***ing <laughs> <laughs> I do. I think he's Rat. a, I think he's, a f***ing he's a whining, whinging, complaining, woe is me, I'm the only one that's ever had mental problems. Like, my life was so hard. Everybody's f***ing life is hard. Yeah, you were true. the prince of that's a goddamn true. country who dressed up as a f***ing Nazi, and now you're trying to come back as the Pope? Suck it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Do you know what? They, uh, I mean, I, I, mean, I couldn't wrong. have put it quite like that, but I definitely share the sentiment. Um... Sharon, when you heard Kelly well, there... Well, certainly you, have a way with words. Well, well, Sharon, you've been slightly more polite about them whilst making the same point. It was all very distasteful, Piers. I was totally bored by the whining, the whining, the whining. And, you know, the curtsy, the thing she said about medieval times, her lunch with the Queen was like medieval times, which, as you know, is a Disney-type um, entertainment place for kids. And it's just so horribly disrespectful and just a wine fest. So here we are. Um... It's quite interesting what's happened to them, isn't it? Because I lost my job because of Meghan Markle uh, over that Oprah interview. You, Sharon, then disgracefully lost yours on the talk because you basically said I was entitled to my opinion. Um, where are they now, these two? Because it seems to me that people have basically just got bored of them, which is the most lethal thing of all for any public figures. Who's going to go first? I'll go, go on. first. I just think the proof is in the pudding, in the sense you've been handed the world and every major contract, you had podcasts, you have all of this, and you didn't deliver because you... There, there's nothing to, to deliver. Yeah, because you don't have it. And that's, that's OK. And I think they do have a right to privacy, but that doesn't seem to me what they're looking for. And Ozzy, um, Ozzy, let it, me it ask seems... Ozzy, actually, um, about Sharon getting fired <laughs> from the talk. Because I felt so angry about that, that Sharon would be forced well, out of a job that she was uh, brilliant... Because uh, 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 she was the star of that show. What did you I, make of it? I, I always said it was a setup. Yeah. Yeah. So... I was looking for an excuse to get her up. <laughs> well, yeah, and it was, uh, it, was a, it was the time when, like, what, what better excuse to kick someone off a show than, you know, start making wild allegations yeah. of like racism and it was just it was the it was like the the fad of the, of the moment to just you know burn someone down just to you know wave the woke flag and it was ridiculous yeah it, it was completely outrageous actually um i mean Ozzy, to hear people call sharon a racist knowing her as well as you do uh, how did you feel about was, that when, 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 when i first heard that you got uh, she's leaving the show. I, I, I said, well, Cheryl will stick up for her. She knows she's not a right yeah. friend. And it was Sharon. Cheryl that threw her under the bus. She did. Yeah, yeah. She, she never it, said a it, word I think that's defense. the thing that was... No, and that was the thing that was so disappointing. It's like, you know, all these people that had worked with my mum for double-digit years, mm. knew the whole family, knew everything, not anyone came out and said, hey, actually, that's that's a pile of BS. And mm. and they everyone just went with it because, for one, people couldn't defend my mum because if you do defend, everyone then jumps on you. And it, it, was, it was just nuts. And, you know, Sharon, the interesting it, thing, it, isn't it, was... it? If you go back to the start of it, I had to lose my job on Good Morning Britain here in the UK because... I said I didn't believe a word Meghan Markle said. I wouldn't believe her if she were a weather report. Well, that's been completely vindicated by all the lies which have been exposed since, including stuff that was uh, lied about in the Oprah interview. So, actually, if you take that as the starting point, everything that followed was completely nuts. It, it just insanity, and then it seemed, you know, that, that everybody was parted. Do you like them? Do you not like them? Oh, I'm for them, I'm against them. And it's like... You know, they were given far too much importance mm. because what do they do? Yeah. 
Yes, well, look, Harry's all they do done actually. Wonderful things with the games. He has done an amazing job. Yeah, with the, the Invictus games, games is a very that good thing. Incredible. His service to his country was good, but the truth is, the only value they have to these corporations was to trash their families, uh, all of them. And mm -hmm. I just it. don't believe anyone. Well, I can mean, be... just I mean, you guys. Are, you guys are such an extraordinarily strong family unit through thick and thin. You always have been. It's one of the things I love about you most. When you see people who who basically disown their entire families on both sides and then pretend they're happy. I don't see how people can be happy when they do that. No. No, no the, and the thing is, I've said this so many times, Piers, they're fine, but their children don't have any family. Yeah. No grandparents, no, no aunts, no uncles, no cousins. There's nothing. Nothing. Their, their babies have their mum and dad. And that is what is so terribly sad. Yeah. And they don't they know nothing of their heritage. Where but does this end, Sharon, yeah, for those it, two, do you one... think? I said it in the beginning in tears. It's it's gonna end very, very badly. And I don't know why. It just keeps taking me back to Edward and, and Mrs. Simpson. Yeah. It's like history repeating itself. Yeah. You know, and all of this, you know, cuddly, lovey, holding hands, going everywhere together. It's so disingenuous. It's like, come on. Give and us a break from all of that. Ozzy, having well, been through... Well, in love. Well, they might, I was going to talk to you, Ozzy, about love. Because you have one of the greatest marriages for warts and all, good, bad and ugly. And you've had it all over the decades. But you have one of the greatest marriages I know because it's actually based at its heart, on true love. And for you, what is it about that woman on the end of that sofa right now that's kept you <laughs> sitting there and so in love with her for so long? I couldn't live with her. I've tried. I can't live with her. And she'll strangle him if he leaves. <laughs> besides, <laughs> besides, when I leave, I come back until my clothes are destroyed. Stop and, it, Ozzy. And Sharon, for you, what is the what is the secret of longevity in a marriage? Do you think uh, you have to realise that you can't change anybody, and it's acceptance. And of course, the bottom line is love. But you accept each other, you know, as you are. You can't change anybody. Yeah. We're going to take a short they break. They have to change themselves. Yeah. I think that's right. And you evolve You evolve as people, right? Uh, but I do think, when I look at the four you of you sitting there, and I remember, I think about all the scrapes you've been through collectively, individually, whatever. It's, it's great to see you guys sitting there as this fantastic family unit. You know, and all of you having come through difficult Thank times. You.